dear Dr. Atai, uh, the adherence to guidelines, especially in this branch, the okay, guide Dr. Father. Father. Dr. Father. Okay. You, you have Go a ahead. question for Dr. Muhammad? Yes. I have a question for Dr. Atai. Uh, you know, uh, this, cardi this branch, the cardiac surgery versus cardiology, uh, it seems to be nowadays, uh, and maybe a few years ago, most cardiologists and maybe ca cardiac surgeon also not so adherent to the guidelines, not just in developing countries, maybe even in European, in American also. But if I, I think if you choose a special op option for certain lesion in coronary artery disease, whether PCI or surgery, the most important thing is the experience. Experience of the cardiologist who will do this. Experience of the cardiac surgeon who will do this. So the result will be not just in the frame of guidelines, but in the frame of experience of person who will do this very sensitive job dealing with the coronary lesion and uh, a complication means a death in, in, in this subject, yes. So uh, just I want Dr. Atai to declare this point more. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Dr. <laughs> Father. Uh, this is a good uh, point, actually. And, yes. and that's why guidelines depend not only on the uh, anatomical situation, but also depend on the, as I said, the available technology, uh, the uh, uh, delivery system of care, whether it's an uh, interventional cardiologist or a surgeon, uh, available uh, uh, facility, and also uh, depend on the uh, patient clinical situation. Uh, so the guideline uh, will be uh, taken in consideration uh, to take actually uh, the outcome. The Is the result of the particular treatment going to meet the expectations and going to give you a positive outcome? Or uh, the uh, I was in one of the meeting uh, uh, in a uh, uh, place in the uh, developing in the Middle East. I don't want to say developed countries, and uh, uh, a particular surgeon was addressing uh, cardiac trauma, and he did a beautiful surgery, uh, but the patient uh, died. So uh, uh, my comment on that is, uh, was that the best treatment for the patient? When the patient is dead, the outcome is poor. So we should change the uh, strategy. And uh, uh, my comment was, we should not done the surgery. In fact, we should, what done is uh, uh, a damage control procedure. So, uh, in, in brief, it, uh, the choice of particular therapy depend on the uh, uh, technology, depend on the patient, depend on the patient delivering the uh, uh, service. Uh, the, if you have a good surgeon, uh, a, a scenario, somebody with uh, uh, three vessel disease, uh, a young guy, no complications, uh, if you have a surgeon who could do total uh, revascularization with arterial conduit, you will do the best service to that patient. Uh, if you have a poor surgeon with poor outcome and he will use a vein, for example, uh, versus uh, somebody who is very skilled uh, interventional cardiologist, I probably will choose the PCI. Uh, so uh, it's a combination. And that's why, as Dr. Kassar said, the guideline is not written in stone. But also in combination with the outcome and with the efficacy, uh, it is a guideline 
should be written in stone and should be actually uh, by the controlling body or the government or Minister of Health uh, should emphasize on the guideline in dealing with uh, uh, poor outcome. Uh, uh, Bakir, if I may, am I, am I add a little bit to what you're saying? For example, uh, here in the United States, uh, uh, in discussing with my colleagues in critical care medicines, we know that one of the reasons, one of the reasons as to why we're having poor outcomes with the management of coronavirus patients in the intensive care unit and this whole discussion as to whether they should or should not be put on ventilators is the reality that the public is not really aware of. That because we only have one million doctors in the, in the United States and in the whole United States, we only have about 15,000 intensivists, critical care specialists. A lot of these patients that are being put on ventilators are being managed by doctors that do not know how to manage ventilators and especially ventilation in these critically ill patients of ARDS. So we know that part of our increased mortality is a result of doctors who are trying to do their best, but really don't have the expertise for the subtleties. And it's in a situation like coronavirus that we see that even though the guidelines are there, how to manage them, how to address, it's like you, Buck here. When you're in the operating room, it is your hands, it is your feel, it is your smell, it's your experience that guides you. And as our colleague told you before, we know medicine is based on science, based on science. But in the end, it is on art. And it's a balance. And I agree with everything you say. But in the end, we are seeing right now how not having enough doctors and not having enough doctors properly trained, albeit because this just the coronavirus just hit us hard, can uh, impact us. And we proactively moving forward and learning from this, we have to not just adapt our guidelines, but we need to expand the educational expertise of all our physicians for future pandemics or tragedies. Thank you, Bakir. Thank you so much, Dr. Hector. Uh, please, any, anyone who want to discuss? For can that? I add, please, something? Can I? Add? Okay, Dr. Uh, Majid. Okay. So since I started this and in response to Yusuf, uh, um, Al Marani's uh, uh, question and the good explanation by uh, good response by Dr. Ba uh, uh, Muhammad Bakal and also uh, Hector. Um, just would like to add one thing. Um, as I said earlier, if you if you go back to the principles to the definition of the evidence base, which I'm afraid we have no alternative but to adopt at present, at least because that's the best available option. It's the integration of uh, of the best individual expertise, individual expertise with the best available evidence from research based on which and, and gu guidelines were, were developed. And as I said earlier, it's not written on stones, but you need to adapt it. Okay, I'll give you a very common example, very common example can be used in Iraq, and different, and, and in Egypt, I think, but different from UK and US. The NICE guidelines and the American Cardiac Association guidelines also on, on, um, uh, prophylactic antibiotic for bacterial endocarditis, for example, clearly says there is no need for bacteria, for prophylaxis for those who have, um, VSD, etc., etc., etc. If you have a good dental, uh, you know, um, um, you know, no more, uh, unless you have had previous history of uh, bacterial endocarditis or a surgery of a patch within the last six months or whatever, something like that, etc., or, or metallic valve. But nowadays, this rule, this evidence being broken in many developing countries based on their good experience there. So they are using bacterial endocarditis prophylaxis for VSDs, aortic stenosis, because they reported larger number of children with bacterial endocarditis. So this is, it is not just copy and paste, as I said earlier. It, you have to adopt it. Okay. But I'm afraid when it comes to you, 
the response to Yusuf in particular. You cannot apply your own expertise only because if you make a mistake and we are subject to mistakes and, and, and faults as individuals, and when you are prosecuted in the court, uh, okay, when you are standing in a court or Gidam al Ashair or whatever, all right, uh, then you will be questioned. What, what have you been using? Uh, what sort of, can, uh, you know, what standards you followed? Okay. Why did you treat this? Is it your own opinion or you followed something well established? So I'm afraid there's no other alternative at present. But of course, you match it with the best clinical expertise available. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Majid. Anyone uh, want to discuss further?